Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are so thrilled to have a very special guest today. My old friend and a friend of ATP, Tom Delbacaro, is back. He's an author. Tom, show your book. Let's publicize <laughs> it if we can, please. He's a commentator on Fox, Fox Business, you name it, everywhere. Uh, former head of the Republican Party in California, former almost senator from California. Nice to see you again, Tom. Great to be on, and uh, thanks for all the work you continue to do. I appreciate you as well. I've got so many questions to throw at you because as we talk, you seem to know a little bit about everything or a lot about everything. So let's start with a whole bunch of things that are going on and you give me your opinion and let's talk about it. So to begin with, um, woke culture has fallen off a cliff into an abyss of stupidity. Uh, the latest example is what's going on in Portland, Oregon. Um, there's a high school that just changed its name from President Woodrow Wilson to uh, a, a lady that was a um, Black Lives um, advocate a uh, hundred years ago. And she is not racist. And they decided that Woodrow Wilson is racist. But here's where it got weird. Uh, when they were picking the mascot for the school and everybody voted, the kids, the trustees, the school board, they all love this idea of evergreen because there's so many evergreens in Oregon. But then right before the final vote, someone came up with the idea that, well, in the past, 100 years ago, Black people were getting lynched from trees. So picking a tree as your mascot is racist. Have things gotten so crazy that we actually are going to have a serious discussion? Is there anything safe in the world now? No, it's a good point. And whether it's baseball, whether it's uh, trees, you know, the, the woke crowd spins out of control. You know, I, I'm fond of saying at a beginning of a government or a civilization of people will do anything to survive. And at the end, they'll apologize for doing it. And right now we have nothing but apologists on the left or seemingly so, nothing is sacred. You know, the historian Will Durant used to say that tradition is to society what the memory is to the individual. And if you wipe out your memory, you lose your mind. And the left is in the process of losing its collective mind with ridiculous things like claiming evergreen trees, which you and I both know have nothing to do with hangings. Uh, it's just ridiculous. But once you say racism, everybody freezes, literally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's true or not. And, you know, in, in my career, I've, you know, as head of uh, rescuecalifornia.org, where we're trying to recall Gavin Newsom, Gavin Newsom's henchman called, said that, made the implication that those of us leading this effort are racist, because that's all they got. They can't actually argue the merits of any of these things, but you're right. They throw the race card, and now they seem to throw it with abandon. Well, let's talk about as you and I, former baseball fans until a few days ago. I mean, my whole life I've been a baseball fan and a season ticket holder for many, many years. As we know, Major League Baseball has pulled the biggest event of the summer from Atlanta, which is the All-Star Game, relocated it to Denver, ostensibly, according to their press release, because Atlanta is the home of racist uh, legislation in Georgia. Why? Because they expanded voting rights in Georgia but they now require IDs everywhere. And IDs are racist, as you know, Tom. Although when you go to the All-Star game in Colorado in July, you have to show an ID to get your tickets, show an ID yeah. to get into the stadium and show an ID to get on Delta Airlines if you're flying from Atlanta to, to Denver. But if you wanna vote there, you don't need an ID. What do you make yeah. of IDs for some things, but not for the one Not that's for others. Important. You know, the black civil rights leader, former mayor of Atlanta, Andrew Young, said that voter IDs were a good thing. He, he advocated that they should be given by the federal government at the time they got the social security card. He said IDs are necessary for anyone to participate in society for some of the reasons you just referenced, whether it's getting on an airline or, or otherwise. 
And in fact, in states where voter ID has been implemented, the participation rate of minorities has risen. And Georgia already has a voter ID law to some extent. And it didn't seem to hurt last year when the world knows that <laughs> around the country, including Colorado and in including in Georgia, voter participation rates went way up. So there is no factual basis for their claim, but just as you alluded to before, they throw the race card around and Major League Baseball did not see, look, uh, follow this through or think this through. They moved it from one state with some voter ID requirements to a different state with voter ID requirements with actually a shorter period of time to do early voting. Of course, 36 states have some form of voter ID. But the worst of all of this, of course, is what you started this conversation out with the woke crowd. This is baseball's knee-jerk reaction. I think the commissioner should resign. I mean, he's a member of the famed Augusta National Club, which the left also wants him to boycott. Uh, and of course, he's not gonna do that, but this is incredible hypocrisy. And, and let's be clear about this. Major League Baseball just upped their contract with China, which is crushing democracy in Hong Kong. So it's okay for baseball to make money in China, where they also do live organ uh, harvesting on people. Literally, the government harvests organs from live people and then leaves them to die. That's okay to do business there, but not in Georgia. Very well said. And uh, I don't think there's a rational, logical explanation that you and I could concoct that would make what they're doing even somewhat okay. On another note, um, a very interesting story out of Australia this morning. Uh, Australian TV is just dumping on the fact that Joe Biden seems to be disintegrating mentally right in front of our eyes. I'm gonna read you a quick quote on how they describe our president of the United States. They say that our president, Joseph Biden, is illiterate, incoherent, and cognitively deficient. This is major network making fun of the fact that the president of the United States is falling apart right in front of our eyes. And they wanna know what's going on with Biden's declining mental and physical health because he is the leader of the free world and is an embarrassment to democracy. I've got two questions for you. You're gonna love the second one. Question one, Tom, why are we talking about it? Why is the rest of the world talking about it? Why isn't the United States press talking about it? And number two, are you ready for your old friend Kamala Harris to be president of the United States? Well, I was gonna say even before you posed the who knew what the questions were, but I used to think the over under was 18 months before she would become president, but now I'm not so sure. And she's currently undergoing a uh, uh, sort of a boot camp on the job training because Lord, you know, and I know that she is not, how shall we say, intellectually deep, nor is she serious as someone who will study. And she is going to be president in the not too distant future, which is a danger zone for all of us. I'll get into that in a second. But uh, yeah, it, it, it is ridiculous. And I've written two articles now uh, for the Epic Times called Four Years of Living Dangerously Under Joe Biden, Part One and Part Two. The world does know this. And you have Russia now with troop movements in the United States doing nothing. You had China and Iran, the other axis of evil, doing a trade deal, which will ensure Iran hundreds of billions of dollars for years to come, which means US sanctions no longer matter. That's what a danger you have when it comes to China. And we have now in the White House, the weakest physically and mentally and policy wise president in our history. Now, this would be one thing if this was back in the 1880s, let's say, or, the, or 1916, um, but we're in the high tech world, we're in the nuclear age, and we're in the age of China. And there, you know, China is very aggressive. They don't need troop movements to get what they want. 
They're using all sorts of means like trade, predatory lending, and cyber war. And all of these things spell an incredible danger. And Joe Biden's largely unaware of it. And Kamala Harris is completely unfit to deal with it. Well, let's talk about what you just said. I think you're way over at 18 months. I, honest to God, don't think he's going to last a year. He's barely functional, Tom, when he reads a teleprompter and then they shuffle him out of the room. He doesn't even know where he is. You know, the famous line, I don't know what I'm signing. Should I keep signing? Yes, Mr. President, keep signing. Is there's, there's what, two dozen of these kinds of quotes that are captured on video? Why isn't the press discussing it? Well, as you well know, the press is no longer even feigning objectivity uh, ever since, you know, we, for a good period of time from our founding up until the early 1900s, we had a biased press. And then it was for a period of about 50, 60 years, it was somewhat balanced. Then with Vietnam, the, the left press took over and now it has no compunction about giving you the news. It is purely slanted on the left. They don't want Democrats out of power. Therefore, they will hide the truth or lie about it in so many fashions. And it is an incredible danger to the United States now and to the world. So let's go to the next step. First of all, I agree 100%. Here's the scary start. Right, you've got a guy that is declining right in front of our eyes. Day to day, you can almost see it. It's palpable, palpable, and it's embarrassing and it's sad. And more importantly, for a national security uh, analysis, it's terrifying. What about the replacement? You know better than anybody in this country, having been in California politics and been on the ticket at the same time as our vice president. What can you tell us from an insider's perspective that we should know about her as president of the United States, should that happen? Well, I can tell you from my two debates with her, it was very obvious that she did not uh, have any depth of knowledge about foreign affairs. It's never really been a concern of hers. Uh, she went to law school. She, uh, uh, let's just say she partied a bit to get ahead in politics. How's that for being diplomatic? That, that's a great uh, euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> and, and even in those positions, uh, insiders will tell you that she wasn't very studious. She didn't steep herself in policy. She was very political. Foreign policy is not something you can pick up overnight. It is a study. And, it, you know, I remember in the debate, she was asked about Obama's Syrian policy and she couldn't answer because she probably didn't even know, know it, let alone not wanting to uh, criticize. Uh, but you know, the, the, his Middle East policy had flaws, she couldn't point them out. And now she's gonna have to rely on, on naive leftist advisors. And that's very dangerous in, in this age. You know, JFK used to say that domestic politics can beat us, but foreign policy can kill us. And this is, that's why I, I turned this four years of living dangerously under Joe Biden, which is really Biden-Harris. Oh boy. Great stuff, Tom. I wish we had more time today. Thanks for coming on. I sure appreciate it. Real quick, where can people find you on the web? It'd be great if they could go to politicalvanguard.com and you can pick up my commentaries and tomdell.com as well. Thanks for having me on. It's, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. And for those of you out there in ATP land that haven't yet subscribed, please take out your cell phones and type the message truth in the message box and address it at the top line to the number 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to our text message alert system. You can see Tom Del Bocaro and everybody else who contributes at ATP absolutely for free on your cell phone. For Tom, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report.